Okay, so what we're going to do next, we're going to go through the whole process of how does a cell copy a gene and then transcribe that gene into messenger RNA, and then how does a how does that get translated from there? So these two terms, uh, transcription and then translation. When a segment of DNA is transcribed, in other words, it's copied over, the result is a messenger RNA molecule. The process is called transcription and says the nucleotide bases of the RNA molecule are complementary to those in the DNA strand. And what you end up with, you end up with something called codons, which are little segments of three, um, three base pairs. We'll get to that in a second. Translation is transfer of the information from RNA, and I actually should say, that should say messenger RNA. Um, same thing here. into a protein. Conversion of the nucleic acid language to a polypeptide language. In other words, we're going to build a protein. Remember, proteins are made from amino acids, and there are actually 20 different amino acids scattered out to build an organism, and there are charts on this. The genetic instructions for the amino acid sequence are written in DNA and then I'm also going to put this again. So the messenger RNA is a series of three base words called a codon. All right, this chart is in your outline. I also gave it under the unit. So here we go. Here is a chart of amino acids and the codons, the three base pairs that associate with each amino acid. It's kind of hard to realize this, but all organisms are combinations of these 20 amino acids. This is phenylalanine, leucine, proline, ones you may never heard. You may have heard of phenylalanine before. Uh, tryptophan, wherever that is. Uh, there's tyrosine. Uh, there's tryptophan, you know, it's found in Turkey. Uh, lysine, which is a part of Jurassic Park as well. I'll show you that scene in the last video. Uh, glutamic acid, alanine, and then these are called, this is actually a start codon, MET methionine or methionine, both, or, and then these are called stop codons. So there's a process that's going to give a indicator of when to start making a protein, and then these will stop that. Otherwise, you'll end up with abnormalities, mutations, things like that. All right, so that essentially is yeah transcription and then translation now the genetic code now i gave you this this is a great little flow chart see it has dna strand transcription which to go from here to an rna strand is called transcription that's where you fill in the opposite base pairs and then translation takes place at the ribosomes so here's a section of DNA, and you can see, look, see all the U's? And they're in sections of three. Here's GGC, here's CGU, this is UUU. And remember, this is a messenger RNA strand, so you're not going to have thymine, you're going to have uracil. But if you go over here and look at UUU, there it is. There's phenylalanine. So what's going to happen is there's actually another form of RNA that the sole job is to go out and attach to these amino acids and bring them back to the ribosome during the whole process of translation. And that's what that is showing. So see, with each section of three codons, you get the corresponding amino acid. GGC. Um, had too much caffeine today. Where there it is? GGC glycine. One more. Um, so here we go. Here's UG. Well, I'm sorry. CGU.
Let's see here. Yep, there it is. ARG-9, interesting. ARG, and what you're doing is you're building a protein. Hemoglobin is a protein found in red blood cells that transports oxygen, and it also does transport carbon dioxide, but mostly oxygen is what you hear about. It is a combination of 256 amino acids. We only have four right here. So to make hemoglobin, you have to have the genetic code to fill in 256 amino acids. Yeah, MET is called a start codon. These are stop codons. Um, it says the genetic code is universal, nearly universal, shared by organisms from the simplest bacteria to the most complex plants and animals. So in Jurassic Park, that was the whole basis for everything. If you have a DNA strand, and that's even going on now, if you have a DNA strand uh, and you have the right settings, lab equipment, enzymes, ability to grow cells, you can build any organism if you have a DNA strand. That's where cloning comes in. Okay, so it has right here, functions of the genetic code. So the genes control the characteristics, so the blueprint, to produce all proteins, including enzymes, which turn, cause certain metabolic actions to, activities to occur, and then some genes even regulate the action of other genes. And basically all cell parts, everything is built from a DNA strand. All right, I wanna give you an example. Um, and I think, here's what I'm going to do, okay. So I want you to watch this next section. It's not very long, but uh, there's a movie called Gattaca. And oddly enough, the name of the movie uh, is written in uh, codons, <laughs> or the base pairs, that's what Gattaca. And when you see the title for it, it's got capital G's and everything. But it has to do with DNA, it's futuristic, and basically, um, it's a story about in the future everything is based on your genetic code if you wanted to be a fireman you had to have a genetic code for it and also at the time of birth uh, your genetic code could be processed and tell you what you're predisposed to having or you could even pick out the traits for your children and I think it's really interesting and uh, we'll do just watch this section and then we'll get to the rest of our our part on transcription and translation Okay, I hope that, I apologize for the sound. Um, hopefully it won't get taken down off of YouTube. I tried to keep the section short. So, transcription, we've already mentioned this. So in that particular movie I was showing you, they were able to pick out all the traits for their child, remove any disease predispositions, the bad stuff, it made a comment about depression, alcoholism, uh, addictive tendencies is what they called it. But, um, when you're talking about uh, strict, like how does this process occur? And I have some pictures to show you about this. So transcription, synthesis of a complementary strand of messenger RNA from a DNA team, team template. And it's basically an identical copy of DNA, just there's uracil instead of thymine being added. So the process allows the cell to produce short-term copies of genes that can be used to direct the source information for protein synthesis. Translation takes place at a ribosome. And I had mentioned this, it's in the form of codons. I showed you that, the sequence of three bases um, to synthesize polypeptides, long chains of amino acids that will eventually make a protein. So I mentioned this again already, I mentioned it again also, but hemoglobin, I think everybody can relate to that, carries oxygen and blood, it's 256 amino acids. So they, you have to have the genetic code for it, and then the messenger RNA strand for it, and so the ribosome can read it and produce hemoglobin. People who have sickle cell trait or sickle cell well, sickle cell trait is when it's referred to as sickle cell anemia. There's different, there's actually varieties of that. What it means is when a red blood cell is not carrying oxygen, the red cells get sickle shaped. It's a, 
it's actually a um, um, a mutation of the hemoglobin. Instead of having 256 amino acids, a person with sickle cell trait in its genetic, they have 255. So it, it results in a hemoglobin molecule not functioning 100%. And it's just when it's not carrying oxygen. Yeah, the site of translation is the ribosome. So I'm going to bounce back into time. Remember, we covered the red dots. So those little guys there. The ones attached to, this is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Little red guys. Well, I gave you a picture in your outline a little further down. I'll just show you real quick. That's a diagram of a ribosome. Um, and this is going to be the next video. But there it is. If you blow up a ribosome, that's what it looks like. And that little section through here is where it reads the genetic code and ribosomes make, um, well, with help, of course, they make, they synthesize proteins. Remember, that was their function. Uh, protein synthesis was their function. So the last part of this video, uh, you do have to know what are called the players. So you have DNA, kind of already covered that, double-stranded. Here are the base pairs. Um, RNA also has four base pairs, but has uracil instead of thymine. I kind of beat that to death. But So here's the normal base pairing, and, and it's vice versa as well. So there's three kinds of RNA. There's messenger RNA, which is a strand. There's a, a copy of a DNA gene or section. It's a strand of uh, base pairs in the form of codons. Transfer RNA looks like this. So here is the section of messenger RNA. Now this part right here that we're going to leave off, this is called the anti-codon. The, the GAG is the codon. And what it does, this transfer RNA molecule, it reads that section along the messenger RNA strand and then it moves out into the cell cytoplasm and attaches to the corresponding amino acid. So where are these amino acids found? Uh, they're found in the cell cytoplasm. And like I said, there's 20 combinations of those. And the transfer RNA, RNA molecules move out into the cytoplasm and they attach to these amino acids. Some of these are required from diet. Some the cell itself can can produce. You ever heard of essential amino acids? You have to get those from your diet. So that's what transfer RNA does. It's actually, it makes this little assembly line. It's like the, the workers that go out and grab the correct amino acid and they bring it back to the ribosome during translation. So these represent transfer RNA molecules. Here's the strand of messenger RNA and this is the the codon, see the threes, and see the growing polypeptide chain. This cell, this ribosome is making a um, making that chain, making a protein. So, just like in Jurassic Park, you know, you're able to make a dinosaur. In Gattaca, you're able to make a person, but you're able to give your kid whatever traits you want based on the code, uh, and you can go from there. All right, um, there is another kind. Okay, there's messenger RNA, there's transfer RNA, which are what these things are. And then ribosomal RNA are what make up the ribosomes. So there, that's where you find ribosomal RNA. All right, last part of this video, and I'm gonna make one more, I just like to keep them short. So here's a nice little overview. Over here is DNA, it's double-stranded, and you got the color-coordinated base pairs. You can see A's are binding to T's, and the blue is guanine, blue binding to green. Messenger RNA, or RNA, is single-stranded, and see the purple, which represents uracil, so that's everywhere there was a corresponding adenine, uracil is being added to that. And this is kind of showing how it happens. DNA will split. Well, DNA is copied in the form of a gene. And then here, you can see here, C-A-U-G. Um, here they're making uh, that section of messenger RNA. So 
it's just showing how it's being held together and see the purple right there and that's what and so messenger rna it actually moves out of the nucleus and goes out and attaches to a ribosome and i'll start there next